Hi everyone, my name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Please don't skip this part of the video because I'm going to go over some important things that you have to know before following this tutorial, just because this video is structured a bit differently from my other videos. And of course, I'm going to go over materials such as yarn and hook size, which are incredibly important to make sure that you get the right size of organizers, the right sturdiness. Let's start with the structure of this video. So to make the basket, to make the pouches, and to make the pencil holder, we're going to be using just one pattern. And this one pattern is completely customizable. Don't worry, I'm going to explain further, but I just want you to be aware of this before you start working because it's going to make crocheting these organizers much easier. You're going to have the circular base. Now the circular base is basically the bottom of your organizer. The circular base is the bottom of the organizer and all three of these projects have the same circular base following the same pattern. And this pattern is made up of increase rounds. Now you can adjust the number of increase rounds you do to make the circular base as big or as small as you want. So for the pencil holder, I did a small circular base with less increase rounds. And then for the basket, I did a larger circular base with more increase rounds. And for the pouches, same thing. You can make a big pouch, you can make a tall pencil holder, you can make a super wide basket, completely customizable following just one pattern that you can adjust to your liking. I also wanted to show you guys my new link and bio site for my Instagram and TikTok bio. My favorite feature of this new site is there's a little question mark icon and if you click it, it's going to take you to a crochet video. So if you don't have any ideas for what to crochet, click the question mark icon. It has a very handy page where I address frequently asked questions, so I highly recommend checking that out if you have some questions that I haven't answered before. If you've been following my Instagram stories, then you know I've been doing four days of Bomas, I created a separate page just so you can scroll through all the Bomas crochet projects. I created my dream site with the help of today's sponsor, which is Universe. Universe is a drag and drop website building app which allows anyone to grab a custom.com domain, hyper customize their site, sell their creations, whether it's crochet pieces or crochet patterns, and lots more, all from your phone, iPad, or computer. I love working on my phone, so it's perfect for on the go editing. You can start with one of the many universe templates and then customize to your heart's content. You can change the background color, customize fonts, add images, add jiffies, and so much more. If you're based in the US, the universe cell block will allow you to start selling your creations and start making money in minutes. You can also use the download block to sell patterns and the PayPal block to accept payments. Universe is free, but you can make the jump to pro to remove universe branding, get your own custom.com domain, customize menu styles, access to the code block, and get the ability to add discount codes. With Universe Pro, you also get a lower flat 5% transaction fee and quicker payouts. You can use the first link in my YouTube description to get 25% off your first year of Universe Pro or try Universe for free using the second link. I've also created a cute template for you guys to help you get started. You can sell your crochet creations, you can upload digital patterns, or display your products in a really neat gallery. There are so many possibilities with Universe, and I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. When it comes to yarn and hook size, you can use different yarn types and you can use different hook sizes depending on the yarn type that you decide to use. So for example, if you want a really sturdy organizer, one that's not that super bendy or just something that's a little bit more sturdy, I recommend using t-shirt yarn. For the hook size, I decided to go with a six millimeter hook. However, I've seen people recommend use, using a 10 millimeter hook with t-shirt yarn. I just wanted really tight stitches and a six millimeter hook worked fine for me, but I do recommend just experimenting beforehand and see what works best for you. For the pouches, you can use fluffy yarn, you can use acrylic or cotton yarn, and then any yarn and hook size. Before I show you the easiest pattern ever that you're going to use to make the circular base for all your different organizers, like the pouch, pencil holder, and the little basket, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the yarn and hook size. For the basket and pencil holder, because I want them to be chunky so that they stay upright, I'm using t-shirt yarn with a 6mm hook. And for one of the pouches, I'm using DK weight yarn with a 4mm hook. I want this pouch to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more delicate. And then I also wanted a fluffy pouch that I made with this um, Chenil, Chenil yarn. I don't really know how to pronounce it. And I used it with a 4.5mm hook. 
you're also going to need a bobby pin or a stitch marker. For the t-shirt yarn, I recommend having a bobby pin if your stitch markers are too small. So this is the pencil holder and this is the pouch I made with fluffy yarn and they both are made using the exact same pattern. So first decide what you want to start off with and then I'll show you what pattern to follow. I'm going to be using the DK weight yarn with a 4mm hook for the demonstration just because it's easier for me to show you guys the stitches. We're going to go ahead and get started by making a magic ring. If this is something that you struggle with, don't worry, I'm going to show you another technique later on, but I highly recommend giving this a try because it will make your life so much easier. Start with your yarn tail facing towards you, hold on to it with your thumb and then wrap your yarn around your fingers making sort of like an X shape and then use your ring finger to hold it in place. Insert your hook under and grab onto this part of the yarn, pull it up and twist all while keeping hold of the yarn with your ring finger. Then take your hook, grab onto it, and chain one. And there you've got your magic ring. Now we're going to be starting off by inserting eight single crochets in the first round. So again, regardless of whatever kind of yarn or hook size you're using, your first round will always have eight single crochets. Insert your hook, making sure to work over both of these ends, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both loops. Now I would highly recommend having your stitch marker or bobby pin and marking this first single crochet that you did. I'm going to be working in continuous rounds, so marking the first stitch that you do is very important. Now go ahead and insert seven more single crochets so that we have a total of eight single crochets in the first round. Make sure that you're working over both of these ends and use your fingers to help you. So hold on to it over here, and if you feel like there's no space, just pull your magic ring in tighter so that it's easier for you to hold. Now, if the magic ring is not working out for you, I'm going to show you another technique. If the magic ring works out fine, just skip ahead to where I show the ending of round one and the starting of round two. Another way to make a fake magic ring, this might be good for if you're using thicker yarn like the t-shirt yarn, go ahead and make a regular slip knot. That's how I like to do mine. And then you're going to chain three or four. Depending on the thickness of your yarn, you might need to chain three or you might need to chain four. For the thinner yarn, I recommend just chaining three. Insert your hook into that first chain that you made, the one that's near your slip knot, and then slip stitch by using the yarn and slipping it through the loops on your hook. Now you have a little circle. If you stretch the chains out, you will notice that there's a gap in between your chains. I'm going to use my stitch marker to show you what I mean, but if you insert your hook or something in between the chains, you're going to see that there's a hole. So you're going to be inserting all of your stitches into that hole. So just like with the real magic ring, you're just going to chain one, and now you're going to insert eight single crochets into this hole that's in between your chains. And this will basically be like your fake magic ring. So you do the same steps as your real magic ring, but you put it into your fake magic ring. So this is going to be my first single crochet. And then take your stitch marker and mark your first single crochet. Now go ahead and do seven more. So now it's, now you can see the hole more clearly. It's the one that's in between your chains. If you can't see the hole at all, then you can chain four and slip stitch. But yeah, that's basically it. So if you start off with a fake magic ring, the steps are the exact same. The only difference is that you're inserting these stitches into like a fake magic ring circle. Once you've got eight single crochets in your real or fake magic ring, just pull it in tighter. And now we're going to start round two. Your next round always starts from the marked stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook into the stitch where you've got your marker. You can remove your marker. Now we're going to do our first single crochet of round two and then mark this first single crochet of round two. Don't forget to mark the first single crochet of every round. Now the pattern for round two is to do two single crochets in every stitch all the way around. So starting off from that first stitch, go back into that same stitch and do another single crochet. Now go ahead and go into every stitch doing two single crochets in each of them. So that's one, I'm going to go back into that same one and do two. At the end of this round, you should have done 16 single crochets. Now we're done with round two. 
Now to start round three, once again, we're gonna insert our hook into the marked stitch. Do one single crochet. And since this is our first single crochet of round three, we're going to mark it. The pattern for round three is going to be one single crochet and then an increase. An increase is when you do two single crochets in the same stitch. So we already did one single crochet. Now in the next stitch, we're gonna do an increase which means that in this next stitch, you're gonna do two single crochets in the same stitch, making an increase. And now we're gonna repeat this pattern all the way around. So one single crochet, and then an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. One single crochet, and then two single crochets in the same stitch. An easy way to check if you're on the right track rather than counting all the stitches you did and then making sure it's the same number, if your round ends with an increase, then you're probably on the right track and you don't need to go back and count. Now we're going to do round four. So we're gonna start off by inserting our hook into the marked stitch. Do one single crochet, mark the first stitch of round four. Now the pattern is going to be two single crochets and then an increase. So we did one. In the next stitch, we're gonna do another single crochet. So that's two single crochets. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna do an increase, which means we're gonna do two single crochets in the same stitch. If, if you're still confused, here's how it goes. So you do one single crochet in the next stitch, another single crochet in the next stitch. So that's two single crochets. And then in the next stitch, you do an increase which is two single crochets in the same stitch. And you repeat this all the way around. I like to call these increase rounds because what we're doing with this pattern is increasing the size of the circular base. So your circle with the increase rounds is just gonna get larger and larger. And an increase round is basically just a round that has increases in it. So just like the name suggests, we are increasing the size of the base. So for example, for my pencil holder, I only did three increase rounds. I did eight single crochets, two single crochets in every stitch, and then the pattern of one single crochet increase. So I only did three rounds, and then I did, all of these are just repeat rounds. So whenever you think that your base is large enough, just stop doing increase rounds and move on to the part where I show repeat rounds. And we're done with round four. Now I'm gonna show you round five. From now on, the pattern is very, very repetitive. So for round five, you start off just like you started the other rounds with one single crochet and mark the first stitch. The pattern for round five is gonna be three single crochets and then an increase. So what happens is that as you do more rounds, the number of single crochets you do before an increase goes up by one. So in round four, we did two single crochets and then an increase. And in round five, we're doing three single crochets and then an increase. So one in the next stitch, two in the next stitch, three, that's three single crochets. And then in the next stitch, an increase. And then you go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around. Now I'm gonna show you guys one last example round and then you can continue doing more increase rounds if you want the base to be larger or you can stop whenever you want. In this round, we did three single crochets and then an increase. So in the next round, we're gonna do four single crochets and then an increase. So like I said, as you do more rounds, the number of single crochets you do before an increase goes up by one. So that's one, two, three, four, and then an increase. I like using single crochets for these projects. It just makes a really neat effect, but you can use any other stitch for this as well. Two, three, four, and then an increase. You repeat this all the way around. If you were doing another round after this, then the pattern for that round would be five single crochets and then an increase. And then after that, six single crochets and then an increase. 
Now that we're done with the base, I'm going to show you how to do repeat rounds and these rounds will build the length of whatever you're making, whether it's basket, pouch, pencil holder, and you can do as many rounds as you want. So look, we've got, oops, so dirty. So we've got the base and now we're going to do repeat rounds that go upwards. So a tip that I have for you here to make sure that your work goes straight upwards for the basket or for the pencil holder is to only work into one of the loops for your first repeat round. So the steps remain the same. You start off with your first single crochet in the first stitch, but instead of working into both of the loops like that, you only work into one of the loops. So just one of them like that and you do your first single crochet and then you mark it with a stitch marker. This just helps your work to start going upwards rather than like sideways and upwards, unless that's the look that you're going for. So if you don't like the look that you get by working only into the back loops, you can work through all of the stitches. So again, it's super customizable and completely up to your preference. Now do one single crochet into each of these loops or the whole stitch, depending on what you like. And that's it. There's no pattern to follow here. You just do one single crochet into every stitch. And that's why I like to call these repeat rounds, because you're just going to be repeating one single crochet in every stitch for as many rounds as you like. After your first repeat round, you'll start to see that your work is slightly curling upwards, and that's exactly the effect that we're going for. And you have these little loops over here, which kind of signal that you stopped working on the base and now you're working on the repeat rounds. However, if you inserted your hook through both the stitches, you won't have this and that's completely fine too. From now on, you can do as many rounds as you like. And for all of these rounds, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do your first single crochet into that first stitch to start the round. And don't forget to mark it so that you can keep track of how many rounds you're doing. Please don't lose the stitch marker because we're working in continuous rounds, you won't know where your round is starting and ending. So that's why we need the stitch marker in the first stitch of every round. Now you just do one single crochet into every stitch. That's it, you just do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around and around and around. I just finished another repeat round. I'm gonna show you one more time because I know it can be a little bit confusing, but to start your next repeat round, just do one single crochet and mark it. And just do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. For reference, I did seven repeat rounds for the pencil holder. So three increase rounds and then seven repeat rounds. And then for this fluffy pouch, I did four increase rounds and then 10 repeat rounds. And that's how the pattern works. I really love it because it's so easy to make customizations as you like, and you can really make this any size and use this pattern to make decor, organizers, amigurumi. This is a pattern that I use for my bunny holding a heart amigurumi. It's my go-to pattern for anything that has a circular base and then something I need to build upon with, with repeat rounds. So I'm making a basket with some red t-shirt yarn and I finished the increase rounds for the base. So I did six increase rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I did my first repeat round by working only into the back loops. Now let's say that you wanted to switch colors. Here's how you're gonna do it. You're going to insert your hook like normal into the stitch or into the back loop. Then you're going to pull up a loop but you're not going to complete the single crochet. Instead, you're going to get the yarn color that you want to switch to, make a little loop with it like this, and then slide this loop through to complete the single crochet like that. Now you're just going to tighten this, and now you've got your other color attached. Now for my next few rounds, I'm going to be working with only pink, so I'm just going to insert my hook regularly into the stitch because I finished my first repeat round and I'm going to be working over these ends. So just a regular single crochet, go into the next stitch, regular single crochet and I'm working over these ends. So I'm just holding on to them and I insert my hook and single crochet. So that's how you can switch colors if you want to add more colors. 
Now, I'm not going to be keeping this with me the whole time. I'm just going to remove this. So just get my scissor and maybe cut. So I'll work over it for a little bit and then I'm just going to leave it. And then when I need to add red again, I'm going to show you how to do that. After doing another round of just one single crochet in every stitch, I want to add a little bit of red over here. Oh, and I just realized that I forgot to tell you guys to mark the first stitch of your round. This is really easy because I switched colors, so I know that this was my first stitch. But yeah, don't forget to do this. Otherwise, you're going to lose track of where your round starts and ends. Now that I want to switch colors again, I'm just going to insert my hook pull up a loop but I'm not going to complete the single crochet instead you're going to complete the single crochet with the color that you want to switch to so you make a little loop and you slide that through like that and then you just tighten everything and now you can just work with the red and I'm going to be working over these so I'm going to go into my next stitch making sure that I'm working over these ends and single crochet like normal one single crochet in every stitch to complete the round now if you're only making short color switches like if you're only doing like four or five stitches and then switching back to the color you were using before you don't have to cut this and i'm going to show you how to switch without cutting the yarn as well i'm just going to do a few more stitches with red and then show you how to do that i want to switch back to pink so i'm going to insert my hook pull up a loop and then let go of the red yarn, grab the pink yarn, and then pull it through these two loops so I can switch to pink. Tighten this, and now I won't be using the red for a while, so I'm just going to cut it. So if you're not going to be using the color for a while, you can just cut it and then work over some of it that's left over just to like secure it a little bit more. But if you need to use your yarn after a few stitches, then don't cut it and just switch to it after working over it if that makes sense so now you can basically just do as many color switches as you want and make whatever kind of design on your basket i'm going to be doing just some abstract color switches nothing too specific i'm just going to switch colors whenever i feel like it there's another little optional step that you can take so if you want like your basket or whatever you're making if you want the top of it to pull a little bit inwards then in your very last round you can slip stitch tightly all the way around so here's how you would do that. You just pull up a loop and slide it through, making a slip stitch. And yes, you still have to mark this so that you know when you're done with this round. And then you just go ahead and slip stitch into every stitch. But you have to do this really tightly so that it pulls the top of your organizer in tighter. And it also creates just a nice little border around. This is what it looks like and it's just pulled my basket in just a little bit at the top making it sort of like a more round shape now here's how to end your work once you're ready you just insert your hook into your first stitch and you slip stitch once again and that's basically it now you can get your scissor you can cut your yarn pull in and then you can just hide your yarn I usually just insert my hook and pull it through bringing my yarn to the back side and then I'll just hide it through those loops over there and you will be all done with whatever organizer you're making I'm just going to show you how to end your work again with the pouch as an example once you've done as many rounds as you want you just insert your hook into the marked stitch and you can remove your marker you won't need it anymore slip stitch for a good measure maybe slip stitch into the next stitch as well and then you can fasten off so just chain one and cut your yarn pull and tighten and you can hide your yarn end in so now you've got your pouch now i'm going to show you how to make this little drawstring over here get another piece of yarn you can use a different color and make a regular slip knot and now go ahead and chain at least 40 to 90 to even 100 chains because this needs to be long enough to act as a drawstring to go around your pouch and tie into a bow. Once you're done, we're going to fasten off your work. So you don't have to do anything. You're just going to get your scissor and cut, pull and tighten. You are going to lose a few chains 
do the fastening off, so I lost about three to four, but you really gotta make sure that it's super tight. And I've got your long chain. We're going to work two by twos, that's my first row, and in my second row, I'm just going to insert my hook and get my chain to basically come through and pull. All right, I'm gonna try to make this as equal as I can, just so that there's not more on one side and less on the other, even though it doesn't really matter that much, so it can be a little bit uneven. Now I'm going to skip two stitches, one and two, and go into the next hole, slide this through, skip two stitches, insert my hook, slide this through, so that's what I meant when I said we're going to be doing two by two. And also don't forget to work on the other side as well. So skip two stitches, grab this through and pull. Skip two stitches, insert your hook, pull this through. And you basically do this until you've gone all the way around so I barely did anything, but you're supposed to do this until well, you don't have any more stitches left. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So this is what I meant. When you come all the way back around and well, you don't have any more stitches to go through, we are just gonna tie it into a bow. But before we do that, I like making a knot. So this is how your pouch is gonna close. You're just gonna pull, 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 pull. Your pouch is gonna close up like that. And then you just tie a little bow. And mine is incredibly long. I shouldn't have made it that long. But yeah, at the end of it, you just cut these. Don't really worry about it coming undone. I've made a lot of bows this way and they don't usually come undone. I mean, unless you're super duper rough with them, which I don't think we're gonna be. And yeah, you've got your cute little pouches. Now to make the heart-shaped jewelry tray, trinket tray, whatever you wanna call it, we're going to be following one of my heart cushion patterns. And the reason why I'm not showing you step-by-step -step in this tutorial is because that previous tutorial is already very detailed and goes super slow, which makes it perfect for beginners already. Please excuse me, I'm sorry that I'm redirecting you to another video, but I promise it's worth it. You get to watch the demonstrations from rounds one to five, and then after that, you have the written pattern, which is super repetitive, that just goes on and on and on now i do want to clear up a few things if you have followed this pattern before that's great if you have followed this pattern before and you face troubles and you think this pattern is absolutely well not written well i'm here to tell you that it is because i've used it for multiple projects and never faced any problem with the stitch counts so here are some common mistakes that you might be making with this pattern which is leading you to not have the right stitch counts so just bear with me, I'll get through this and then I'll show you how to make the heart basically go upwards to make that tray shape. So when you finish a round, you're going to see this stitch over here. This is not an extra stitch. That's your slip stitch from the previous round. So that means you don't have to insert anything over here. And then after the slip stitch is your chain one. Again, you don't insert anything into your slip stitch and your chain one. When you're ready to end your round, you go into your first stitch from the previous round and again you can always use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch that you do so you don't forget so i'm going to go into that first half double crochet that i did at the beginning of round two and to end my round two i'm just going to slip stitch and chain one now i'm going to start round three which starts with seven half double crochets one in each stitch your first half double crochet of the round should always go into that same place where you slip stitch that's another common mistake people might be making. And now to make your life easier, get a stitch marker and mark this first half double crochet you did. So now you know that you have your chain one and your slip stitch and you don't insert anything into them. So when you come back around and you feel like the stitch count is wrong because you still have extra stitches, those are not extra stitches. That's your slip stitch and your chain one. And I know that in the video, I'm showing how to make the heart by changing colors. The steps are the exact same, even if you're not changing colors, you still follow the same pattern and to end and start a new round, that's how you do it. 
So go ahead and do as many rounds of the heart as you want to to make your jewelry or trinket tray as big as you want. Once you've done as many rounds as you want to, I did rounds one to four because I want to use this for my rings. We're going to make the part of the tray that goes upwards. So you're just going to go through only one of the loops. So you've got your front loop and you've got your back loop. So you're going to go through only the front loop starting from where you slip stitch and single crochet. Now you're just going to single crochet into each of the front loops of every stitch. Just one single crochet into the front loops. Make sure that your single crochets are tight, so try to keep an even tension. Don't make them too loose, otherwise this part of the tray won't go upwards. I'm just going to show you one more time if you're still confused. Front loop and back loop, you grab onto only one of the loops. And when you flatten your piece out, you're going to see that it's going upwards. Once you're done doing the first round, I would recommend that you do another round just to make it a little bit higher up. And this round works the same way. You're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch until you come all the way back around. Now, if you feel like your heart isn't maintaining its shape, here's what I would recommend. You can single crochet two together. So it doesn't matter which stitches it is, as long as it's somewhere near this point of the heart. So you can single crochet two together and then do one single crochet in every stitch. If you feel like this part's too bumpy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two single crochets in this stitch just to make it even out. And apart from that, I'm just doing one single crochet in every stitch until I come back over here. Look how cute this is. Um, there is definitely a bit of adjustment to make. So I do have to like squeeze this in a little bit or maybe pull out the edges. So it's not a perfect pattern, but by doing the little single crochet two together and the two extra single crochets here, it really helps maintain the shape. And once you're ready to end your work, here's how you're gonna do it. Just remove your stitch marker and slip stitch into the next stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch again, just to make it extra secure. And now you can cut your yarn pull and tighten and then you can hide this yarn piece so here's what i was talking about because my yarn is so delicate this place just keeps falling so i do need to stretch it out a little bit to have it maintain its shape but then whatever shape i put it in it kind of just stays in that shape until like i move it around again if that makes sense yeah i just wanted to be really transparent with you guys and let you know that this might be a problem that you face but it's so cute. Now there are other patterns for rectangle shaped organizers out there. I just think they're more complicated than they need to be. So I'm just going to simplify it for us. We're going to go ahead and make a slip knot. The size of this is completely customizable, which is why I wanted to make a simpler, easier pattern that you can make more customizations to. Now just go ahead and chain. After making a slip knot, you're just going to chain whatever width you want for your organizer. So the width is the shortest length and the length is the longest length of a rectangle. So that's what we're going to do. I just did a random number of chains that I think would be good enough. Now we're just going to do rows of single crochet. Super simple. You're just going to skip the first chain, insert your hook into the next chain and do one single crochet. Right now we're making the base of our organizer. And this can be any size you want it to be. You just do one single crochet in every chain all the way down. So the base is just rows of single crochet, nothing special. After we finish this row, we're going to do another row and then another. And you just keep doing rows until you have the length that you want. Don't be worried if your work is curling like this after the first row. This will go away after you do a few more rows. Now to start the next round, you're just going to chain Sorry, to start the next row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Ignore the chain one and insert your first single crochet of the next row into this first stitch. Now you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way down. And then once you're done with this row, chain one again, turn your work, one single crochet in every stitch. And do as many rows as you want until you have the length that you want. Just make sure that you're inserting your hook through both the stitches like that and single crochet like normal. I'm at the end of another row and for any beginners watching, just make sure that you also do your last single crochet into the last stitch. If you're working with t-shirt yarn, you are going to be struggling with the curling, but don't worry, it is going to go away. Just trust me on this. Now we're going to start our next row, same steps as before. You're just going to chain one, turn your work 
and start the next row by single crocheting into every stitch. Can you hear the birds too? They're pretty loud today. Go ahead and do this till the end of the row and then do as many rows as you like. This is my finished piece. I did quite a few rows. This is the size of approximately my laptop. And now we're going to start doing the part that will sort of pop up. All right, so bear with me, everyone. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're going to single crochet all across over here and here and here, and then we're going to fix up this side. First, insert another single crochet into that last stitch of your row. And then mark that stitch that you just made with a marker. This will be the first stitch of our round. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert our hook as close to the edge as possible. Here's how I like to think of it. So I'm gonna insert it here and then here, and then I'm just gonna repeat this pattern. So one, one single crochet, and in the next space, two, and then three. I'm gonna to try to do these as tightly as possible. Four, and as you can see, it's gonna start coming up all by itself. If you're still not sure where I'm inserting my hook, it's these holes and then this place over here. So insert my hook, single crochet, and then for the next one, I'll just insert my hook here, like kind of into the stitch itself, and single crochet just repeat this until I reach the end of this side over here. This is what my work looks like and once I reach the corner over here I did two single crochets in that corner and now I'm just going to do one single crochet here as well. So the steps are the same. You're just doing one single crochet and inserting your hook as close to the edge as possible. But you have to make sure that your single crochets are not too loose Otherwise, your work will start dragging down, which we don't want. Just do one single crochet across here, and then do two single crochets in the corner, and then one single crochet all the way across. All right, now I've got only one side to complete, and this side should be the one where you ended your rows. So you'll be able to see these stitches, but don't go through the whole stitch like that. Instead, only go through the back loop like this and single crochet just so we can make sure that this is still popping up. Oh, and one other thing I did is, so I was working like this, right? And my single crochets were coming up. I very forcefully turned my work this way and then pushed all of my stitches up like that. So now they're facing this way. So I recommend doing that before you start working on this side. Now I'm just working into the back loops so that the single crochets stay up. So one more time, you've got your whole stitch, you've got your front loop and your back loop, only go through the back loop. This applies to only when you reach the part of your work that has these proper stitches. And go ahead and do one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch until you reach back to this stitch. And now we've gotten to the super easy part. I'm just gonna go into this stitch, one single crochet, and from now on, you're just going to be making rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So let's start our next round by inserting your hook into the marked stitch. Remove your stitch marker and do one single crochet. And then place the marker back so you know where your round starts and ends. Now go ahead and just insert your hook into every stitch and do one single crochet in each of them. Insert your hook normally and one single crochet. You're going to do this all the way around. So now we're building the length for the sides. One single crochet all the way across, go around, all the way until you come back over here. So one single crochet in every stitch. So just after the second row, my organizer's starting to come together. Please ignore these stain marks. I was drinking coffee and this rolled around in some coffee that it spilled. So there's like coffee stains in some places in some parts of the yarn, which are showing up, which I'm so annoyed by, but hey, what can you do about it? So I finished my second round and I'm gonna do my third round. You start all of your rounds the same way. 
you do one single crochet into the marked stitch and then you mark it again so that you know where your round ends and begins and then you single crochet all the way around until you reach back to the marked stitch make sure you're doing one single crochet in every stitch don't make them too loose otherwise your work will become will basically sag like that and that's just about it do as many rounds as you want until your organizer is as tall as you want it to be and then i'll show you how to end your work this is what it looks like as i did more rounds it did start to lose some of like that square shape but a simple pinch fixes it and because this t-shirt you're on and it's so sturdy it just stays in whatever shape i put it now i do want to let you know that as you're doing your first few rounds i probably should have mentioned this earlier but as you're doing your first few rounds you're going to notice that the, your work is curling so if one side's going up and the other side's going up and then the other two sides are down and your work's a bit wonky don't worry about it mine was exactly like that but as i did more rounds the weight from those rounds basically pushed my organizer down and now it's like completely uniform i don't know if you can see that Here's how you're going to end your work. Just slip stitch into the marked stitch. Like that. And that's just about it. If you want, you can also slip stitch into the next stitch just to make it a little bit secure. And if you want to do a border around your work, you can slip stitch in every stitch. I'm just going to end my work here, cut my yarn, pull, and tighten. And then just slide this through so I can hide it on the back of my work. All right, everyone, I'm going to show you another optional step, and that is adding a divider. This is going to be a bit tricky, so please try to follow along. First, find the place you want the divider to be. So I want the divider to be right over here. Insert your hook as close to the wall. So this is the wall. Just insert your hook right over there through it, and then get the yarn that you want to use. Make a little loop and so it's going to be really tricky for me to show you guys but you're basically just going to hold the loop under and slide it through with your hook like that and now you've got this little loop now go into the next place so right there <laughs> i don't know how to show you guys this and then you're gonna okay and then grab this and pull it through and then slip stitch so pull the same thing through that loop does that make sense everyone you're just slip stitching basically i'm gonna show you again don't worry so now we're gonna go into the next one so whatever hole you have next and then you've got your yarn you're gonna pull it up like that so look you've got that previous loop and then the loop that you just pulled up now slide this one through this one i'm gonna use my fingers to help me because there look you should have a slip stitch and now do this all the way down until you come back over here <laughs> let's do it one more time so go into the next place pull up a loop Oops, i pulled up too much and then take that loop through there, making a slip stitch. Once you work to the end, we're just going to cut our yarn. And you're just going to pull it. And that would be the end of this step. Now we are going to attach our yarn again into that other slip stitch. Insert our hook through that first slip stitch on the other side. And then grab your yarn, make a little loop with it, and slide it through the slip stitch. Like that. Now you're going to chain one. And now insert a single crochet into that same slip stitch. So go back through that same slip stitch and do a single crochet. <laughs> Pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through both of the loops. I'm struggling because I can't get my hand around the camera. And I don't know how to show you guys. Um, I'm so sorry about this. But you're just going to single crochet. Right? So regular single crochet through that slip stitch. Okay, I can't do this. I'm going to do a single crochet and then come back. 
Okay, so that's my first single crochet. Now you're gonna do one single crochet into each of these slip stitches. So you're gonna take your hook and you're gonna insert it through the slip stitch like that and then you're gonna single crochet. So just do one single crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop and then you're gonna have two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through both loops. Okay, so look, second single crochet. Now do one single crochet into each of these until you reach the last one. All right, so once you're done with that, you've got your first row of single crochets and now we're just gonna do rows of single crochet. Remember how we did this part where we would chain one to start a new row and then we would turn our work and now we're just going to single crochet in every stitch to make the next row. And that's all you're gonna do. You're just gonna do rows of single crochet until this part of the divider is as tall as you want it to be, or basically as tall as the rest of your basket. So you just insert your hook into every stitch and you do one single crochet. It probably would have been easier to do this before you did the rounds surrounding the basket, but I did want to see what length I want and then work from there. But if you're making more baskets and you already know which what length you want to do, then I would recommend doing this step before you do the rounds. You've got this, just do rows of single crochet, one in every stitch until you have the length that you want. Once you're done, just end your work. So just chain one and then cut your yarn and pull it through one of the stitches on the side. Once you've got that pulled through, you're just gonna insert your hook back through and try to go through the corner of your work. So maybe right over here. and then pull this through again. So that's just gonna hold it in place. What you can do is you can sew the sides completely, but I don't really mind it. Like, yeah, there's a gap, but it doesn't really show or affect like the part that makes it a divider. So I don't really mind it. Um, once I have a little loop here, I'm just gonna pull this through and tighten and it's gonna make a nice little knot to secure my work in place. And then I'm just gonna weave this through all the other stitches like this to hide this end. I put a little marker on the stitch that I wanted to attach the piece to. I'm gonna insert it through both of these pieces. Get the yarn and slide it through. Now we can tie a knot to secure this in place. Just straighten out the divider and well, you're done. Adjust your piece and if you feel like, so look, there is a little gap. So if you want, you can sew this together with a needle, like a regular plastic needle. You can just sew through connecting the pieces together. But like I said, I don't really mind it. I think it still looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna end my work here. So this is my finished organizer. I'm thinking of adding a little bow here. I also put a little red bow on the other side. I highly recommend adding bows. I'm just in my bow era and they just make everything look so much cuter. I'm gonna use this as like a crochet organizer and just put the yarns that I'm working with into the organizer so that I just take the straight crochet, put everything back. Cause just look at the state of my desk right now. So yeah, I highly recommend making these crochet organizers. Don't forget to tag me in your creations. I wanna see what you use these for. 